Hey internet, hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a breakdown of how I created this futuristic cyberpunk noir inspired image. I created it back at the start of 2021 when I was first trying my hand at these kinds of composite images and still had a lot to learn. And I'm still learning, and to be honest, I was on the fence about posting this video as I know I could do it much better now. I'm sure at some point in the future I'll revisit the idea and try my hand at it again, but for now, I thought some of you might still be able to get some use out of seeing how it was made. Hope you enjoy it. After searching the internet for all the stock images and elements I was going to use in this piece, the first thing I did was mask out just the elements from each image that I needed and got them positioned correctly in the composition. So since I knew I wanted this scene to be set in an alley and for the ground to be kind of wet as if it had just stopped raining, I searched for several stock images of alleys in an urban setting. I found this image and thought it was perfect so I used it for the ground. Here's another stock image of an alley. As you can see I warped it quite a bit to make it fit the perspective, then masked out the parts I didn't need like the ground, light, and some of the buildings off in the distance. This image I just needed to use the buildings, so I masked out everything but them. And more buildings to fill in the right side of the image. Then one last image on the left side, and that takes care of the main parts of our alleyway. Now here's our main protagonist in this scene. An unnamed detective who's following a lead that's taken him into this dirty back alley. He needs a gun, of course. I know it's kind of hard to see right now, but we'll be able to see it better once I add highlights a little later. He'll also need a car to use to get around the dangerous streets of this neon metropolis. The hardest part about this was finding a stock image of a car from behind and at the right angle to match the perspective of the alleyway. After I did finally find one, though, I needed to make it look a little more futuristic. There we go. And let's mask it into the scene. Perfect. Next, I wanted to introduce a few environmental elements of things you'd typically see in an alley. That's mainly trash bins and trash cans, but details like this add realism to the story I want to tell, as well as add some visual depth to the scene. The next elements I needed to add are obvious ones, as what's a futuristic cyberpunk city without lots and lots of neon signs? I tried to think of what kind of signage you might see in a seedy back alley like this. After searching for some decent stock images, these are the signs I went with. For the little bit of sky you can see, I just added some white color off in the distance. I know I'm going to make the vanishing point of the buildings fade off into a white haze later on, so this is fine for now. Now that all the elements are in place in this scene, it's time to start making them fit together. Firstly, the saturation of the buildings is kind of all over the place. So I clipped a hue saturation adjustment layer to each individual building element and adjusted their saturation until the saturation for each building was more uniform. I also kept the overall saturation low since this is going to be a scene set at night. I also clipped a curves adjustment layer to each element just to even out the tones of the buildings and darken them down a bit. Then I did the same thing to the car, and I also tinted the front windshield. Then darkened down the trash bin and trash cans too. Now in the original stock photo of the figure of the man, there's a light coming from behind him, which I don't want in this scene, so I just darken that down as well. Next I just need to clean up a few details. First I darken the sidewalk below the buildings in the distance, as well as the sidewalk here in the foreground. I also found the poster on the wall distracting, so I removed that too. Then I darken down the building behind the motel sign just a bit more so that you could see the better, see the better see the sign better. Now it's time to add shadowing to all the elements we've added so they can blend naturally into the scene. First I painted a shadow under the car with a soft black brush, then one beside and behind the trash bin. The side of the trash bin that's facing the camera would be in shadow as well since the main light is coming from down the alley, so I painted that in with that same black brush. Then painted shadows on the trash cans, and the same thing with the shadow from the man. So after I finished adding all the needed shadows for now, I felt that the alley needed something. After thinking on it for a bit, I ended up adding these cables crossing the alleyway at points both near to and far away from the camera. I think it added some more depth as well as some realism. Now for the fun part, and the part where the image starts to really cohere, lighting the scene. On a blank layer set to the screen blending mode, I used a large soft round brush and sampled a color from each sign's light and just dabbed a glow onto each sign, adjusting the color, saturation, and brightness as needed. 
Now, the car's taillights are made up of several layers, and I could go into detail about the settings and everything for each layer, but there wouldn't be much point as it's almost certainly going to be totally different for a different image. Instead, I'll just tell you what each layer does. The first layer is just for brightening up the whole area of the taillight. The second layer is for the brightest part of the light, the very center. This will usually be pretty close to pure white since it's the hotspot. The third layer will be for an inner glow around that hotspot, which will usually be more of a yellow or orangish color. Fourth layer is an outer glow around the whole tail light. And optionally, if you wanted to add lens flare, the remaining layers would be for that. Just find a flare that's on a black background, position it over the light, and put its blending mode to either lighten or screen. Next, I wanted to add an ominous blue light coming from between two of the buildings where our detective is facing. Wherever that light is emanating from hopefully holds the key to the next clue he needs in his investigation. I then used a mist brush to add an eerie mist coming from down the alley. I also added another shadow from the detective that would be caused by the blue light, as well as a blue color cast that would be in the water puddles in front of that light. Now that I've got all the lights turned on, I need to add color casts and highlights from those lights onto other parts of the environment. I first added a blue color cast to the figure, and put some highlights on his pants and shoes, followed by some blue highlights on top of the trash cans. Then some red highlights on this part of the car here coming from the taillights. Then I added a blue color cast on the car and a little bit more on the ground in front of the figure. Next some red color on the ground behind the car coming from the car's taillights and the sign just above it. Some red highlights from the Chinese sign hitting the stairwell, the front of the car, and the back of the man. And some pinkish highlights on the trash bin from the motel sign, and on the buildings across from the sign. I made sure to also put highlights on all the cables as well. It's pretty hard to see, but I did put a white highlight on the edge of the car's windshield from the light coming down the alley through the mist. Now for some details on the gun so that we're able to see it better, I added a highlight from that large blue light source, a blue light on the gun to give it a more futuristic look, and some smoke coming off the gun barrel. Maybe he had to dispatch a bad guy as soon as he got out of his hover car, letting him know he must be in the right place. Lastly for the lighting, I added a glow around the brightest highlights. This would happen naturally in a camera where the light would be overexposed and reflect off these bright spots. But it also looks like water evaporating off of a hot surface after a rain. So it works to add realism and atmosphere either way. Now for even more ambience, I've added some mist and haze in a few places. First I put some in front of the car to kind of add some separation between it and the buildings, making sure to make it an orangish red color since it would be catching light from the sign above it. Then I just added some more mist and haze around the image to make it look like it's the wee hours of the morning and it's just rained. It looks like a bit much right now, but it won't be quite so hazy once I adjust the contrast in camera raw in just a second. Next I used the night from day color lookup table that comes pre-installed with Photoshop to give everything an overall blue tone so the scene looks more like it's taking place at night. Then I tweaked some settings in camera raw to add contrast and bring out some of the details in the image. For this first pass at color toning the image, I used some custom actions and some LUTs. Now, somewhere along the way, probably when adding that day to night LUT, this light coming from down the alley was darkened a bit too much, so I just lightened it back up ever so slightly. Next, I enhanced some of the edges around the image, making them brighter and adding more glow. This is purely a stylistic choice, but I think it gives the image a more illustrated look. So this is a very minor thing, but I felt some of the highlights on this stairwell were just a bit too bright, so I just lowered the opacity a little. I then did some more color toning inside of Camera Raw, giving it a more blue-purple tone, and added some particles floating around the scene to give it even more depth and atmosphere. I felt like this transition from the red light of the taillights to the blue light on the side of the car wasn't quite right and was too abrupt. So I just softened the transition with a little more red haze. Now this final bit of color toning I did was using the channel mixer and a couple more LUTs. 
I knew there was something about the image that was still bothering me, but I couldn't put my finger on what it was exactly. But after stepping away from it for a while and coming back, I noticed what the problems were. The first thing was the shape of the figure. Something about it just didn't look right. I played around with it in Liquify and came up with this, which I think looks much better. And the next and very last thing needed to complete this image was, I felt, that the graffiti on the building on the right was just too bright and drawing too much attention. So I simply darkened it down. I want to thank everyone for all the likes, subs, and comments I've been receiving. It's meant a lot to me, and your feedback is constantly making my channel better and inspiring me to keep at it. I'm around 150 subscribers away from 1,000 at the time of this video. Reaching that 1K milestone is a huge deal for this channel, so please keep liking and subscribing to help me get there. And keep those comments coming. Thank you all again, and I'll see you in the next video.